Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. It is God revealing himself to me. In it he shows me. In it he shows me. He's the faithful covenant keeping God. He is the faithful covenant keeping God. By putting my trust in his word. By putting my trust in his word. He includes me in his covenant. He includes me in his covenant. Therefore, Therefore I am. Who the covenant says I am. And I do. What the covenant says to do. And I receive. Everything the covenant says is mine. I'm a believer. Not a doubter. So I have eyes to see. And ears to hear. What the spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I'm not only a hearer. I apply what I hear. And God performs his word in my life just like he promised. Amen. That's a pretty good amen. Why'd you say amen? Amen is a, first of all, it's God's name. It's one of his names. Second of all, it's a command. It is, be it so, or be it as it was just said. Praise the Lord. That's why you do it. Just to, just to, just to clear out any religious. Religious, you just do it. That don't, that don't do nothing. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Just, just a little reminder. Amen. That's why I don't have you amen and everything. Turn in your Bibles to, and when you get there, say amen. For what? Okay, anyhow. Okay, uh, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh, second week of a new message. Um, it, 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 praise God. What's Sabbath? Um, this will tremendously bless you. You may not. Think about the Sabbath, which is not a good move, um, because you may not fully understand the Sabbath. So that, that you know, we're going we're going to take care of that. I'm finding out basics aren't basics these days. Somebody forgot to fill people in on basics somewhere along the way. Praise the Lord, Amen. So we, we I want to make sure maybe maybe may, maybe I'm missing it. May, maybe I'm completely off. Holy Spirit's led me off in the left field. You know everything about the Sabbath. But there might be one who doesn't. And this is very, I, I will, I'll say basic. I mean, come, I showed you where it comes from. We'll, we'll go back to that. But it, it sparks a lot of controversy. And I don't want to take it for granted that you are uh, informed properly by the word of God. And that's why you want to take, so you're not talked out of the truth with people's opinions. Okay, praise the Lord. So um, we started this last week and uh, we all here? Anybody here? Okay, so, so we started this last week and we, we establish it. The, 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 the Sabbath, the Shabbat, uh, is the seventh day of the week. We, we see that because God established that in Genesis chapter 2. Um, so there's so much that I could say throughout this topic. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I told you last week about going slow. And anyway, I'm just going to... Uh, do my best to keep going slow because there's so much misinformation. There's so much I could say. Um, and you did a good job. I didn't get any questions this week. You held it. Not because I don't want them, right? But because I want, want you to hold them for a moment, ruminate. Uh, I'll be glad to receive them. Maybe start next week. Okay. 
um, because we're going to go through, we're, we're probably going to touch on things and address your questions anyhow. It's not bad to sit there with your questions. That's how you get answers. All right. That's what, that's, that's the whole basis of Bible study. You have a question. I'll, I'll even, a nagging question. And don't make them say, go ask somebody. Stick with the word of God. Because that's God working in you that's nagging. See, those who hunger and thirst, they get filled. All right. Amen. Okay, so I digress. We, 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 we established last week, we looked last week, went to Genesis chapter 2. I'm not going to go over all the verses we went through. But we saw, I mean, that, that is where um, the Sabbath, the Shabbat is designated. It's the seventh day of the week. And we talked about days. You, you call days strange things. Like today is day one. Tomorrow, it's, it's, it's the day after the seventh day. And the seventh day is the Shabbat. Because some people want to talk about, well, it, you know, Sunday's the Shabbat. No, no, no. There's only one <laughs> day. That's the Sabbath, the Shabbat. That's the seventh day. You call it. After, never mind, story for another time. Praise God. But, you know, because I also, just in Genesis 2-2, two, two, you, you get everything. That's why it's called Shabbat, by looking into Genesis 2-2, two, two, because it's not the name of a day. The name of the day comes from the action God was taking on that day. And I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but they're two different words, and they're very closely associated. When it says God rested from all his works, that's Shabbat, which is where Shabbat came for, from. I, I did. I just said two different. There, there's a letter difference. So the seventh day, Shabbat, came from what God was doing let's try that again it came from what god was doing. he was doing something and see right there is a tip because a lot of people when they want to talk about shabbat what nothing but that's not what god did god was literally letting this is what he's doing he was letting it go he had finished everything, so he's letting it go. He was desisting from exertion. He was ceasing. That's an action. We will talk about this more. And boy, do you need to hear it. Because that's your challenge today. You ain't ceasing. And I ain't talking about today. Okay, I'm already going too fast. You good so far? Yeah. And so, the thing about this is, that we're going to pick up, get into today, the observance of the Shabbat, the Sabbath, which is uh, where the controversy really kicks up today and has been for long time, um, is that its observance was given to the Israelites to distinguish them from all other peoples. Okay, we're going to go look at that in a second, but just, just stop right there. So if it was given by God to a particular group, Why? To distinguish them, make them unique, like circumcision. Well, if everybody does it, okay, we've got a couple people over here, God, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so if everybody does it, it's not unique. I 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm sprinkling. I'm tied up. That, that was one loose end tied up. Just, if it wasn't for you, it wasn't for you. But just take everything. You're going to need it at some time. Praise God. <laughs> All right. So um, that's where we'll pick up today. Uh, let's, let's, get, let's work on this more. Now, here's why. And I'll, 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 I'll tell you where to turn in just a moment. Well, first, let's go to John, uh, John. Romans chapter 14. Before we go back to Exodus and pick up where we left off. Because this is, this is important. Romans chapter 14. Uh, I really like Romans chapter 14. It answers so many difficulties, complications that people bring up. It is the definitive instruction from God of how a people at all different maturities can flow as one. In fact, it's his commandment to how to flow as one. And boy, people violated this commandment because literally every denomination is a result of disobeying Romans 14. People often ask, why are there so many flavored Christians? Why are there so many <laughs> this, 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 and that? Because they don't abide by Romans 14. They fight and split, which is complete rebellion against what God says. Even what we're talking about today. There are whole groups that make it all about what we're talking about. They don't, they don't want to get along with nobody, and p other people don't want to get along with them because it's what we're talking about. But God told us what to do. Um, now, I'm not going to read all of Romans 14, maybe. No, not today. I really like Romans 14. Context is always king, right? But uh, we will take a look at, um, well, we're going to start verse 1. We will look at a few verses. Let me do it like this. Y'all good? Yeah. Uh, then wait for me. Romans, if you got it, say, you got it. <laughs> you know what I do. There you go. Uh, where are you? Romans. Romans 14. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Verse 1. I'm there. Okay, here we go. The Word of God says, him or the one who is, well, I'm going to try to read this quick because we got to come back. Weak, right? Yeah. What is that? It's, it's the, you know, it's a, it's a marker. It's the opposite of what? Strong. So the one who's weak in what? Faith. The faith, the things of God, a relationship with God. What are you supposed to do with them? Receive them. You're supposed to accept them. Which is the opposite of what? Kick them out. Run them off. Chase them away. Beat them up. Pretty clear, isn't it? How everybody is supposed to stay as one. Do you get who he's talking to? <laughs> can, can you read between lines and pick up what he's saying? Let me, let me run it for you again. The one who's weak in the faith, you receive. So who's he talking to? Maybe not. Good answer. You said the strong. Maybe not. People who think they're strong. Well, by, and they could be, but everybody who's strong will get it. But everybody who thinks they're strong might miss it. That's why they'll rebel. I'm so strong in the Lord and faith. Okay, I'll leave it alone. I just, we're good. Okay, we got, we got to get through this. I don't have a problem if people want to celebrate Shabbat. God bless you. God, you ain't going to hell. But, but you don't, I don't, don't want to go there already. But you don't have to. Or, okay, I'm not even going to do that. Okay. Because here's the thing. Everybody gets in a debate about this. I, here it comes right and here we go. Keep it or don't keep it. Specifically, we're in a new covenant. You keep it, don't keep it, this, this, and that. 
And it's either yes or no. Wrong answer. Yes, wrong. No, wrong. Huh? Yeah, I can't give it to you all at once. We're going <laughs> to... I told you, I just, but just let you know where we're going. That's the big fallacy. That's the big mistake. I, I heard the bass. I was like, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. Because it's not yes or no. No is wrong. Yes is wrong. God is always balanced. People are always at extremes. That's why God says walk. People either stuck in the mud or they're running. Okay, y'all missed that. God says you're supposed to walk with me. Well, I'm going to walk. No, no, yeah, you're running. What, what? I'll move when God says move. Okay, that's two extremes. That's, that's people. God says come walk with me. You don't get ahead of me and you don't trail behind. Because if you're my disciple, you come. We're, he's made us equal to himself. Okay, so yes, I've let a cat out the bag, and, and I hope you are wondering, well, if yes is wrong and no's wrong, good, cliffhanger, you're hung, stay put, keep, the answer's coming. And the answer for this is the answer for the entire, quote, unquote, Ten Commandments, law, quote, unquote, law. The law is whole, a whole lot bigger than that. So we've been fussing about ten command. That's that's that ain't even a law. It's not even a law of Moses. It's so much more to it than that. Many more law law. <laughs> this this is why God giving you the scripture. So you can know for yourself. Your salvation is not with a denomination and a group is between you and God alone. You can't join the right club and get in, get, get, get into heaven, whatever you think you're going, whatever salvation. No, it's between you and God alone. Okay, that's where I'm going. Okay, I, 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 I took too, too. Let, me, let me keep reading here. So it says, the one who's weak in the faith receive you. So it's implied he's talking to people who at least think they're strong if they are in, in fact strong. So someone who's strong is what? Going to accept these people who are what? Weak. Now, you're going to see weak is really, you know, they're not confident. They're not not in the faith. They're just not confident in their faith, their relationship with God. No problem. Nobody starts there. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, that you not being confident that's the best place you can be if you're pursuing God. You'll go to, I need to, I need to get to his word. Well, I want to be confident like you, Pastor Rick. Well, that's how I got here. I didn't ask people. I pray, I study, I pray. I get, I'm, I'm talking to God. People have told me a whole lot of stuff that God didn't say. And I, I could be, I'm not, you know, impressed or flattered that you want to be as confident as me. But if you want to be as confident as me, you know, you, you know, I'm confident in this. With all that I know, I don't know much. With all that I know, I and I and I, I and see the one, see, I, yeah, I, cause I've been on this. This has been my life for decades, so I know a lot, and that tells me. There's many more, many more fold times more that I don't <laughs> know. So the confidence is always in God, not what you know. Because what you know should always be changing. N not like, oh, I thought that was right, now this is, not like that, but expanding. 
it should always be, and will always, if you're following God, he's always going to be peeling back layers, opening eyes. Y'all okay? Y'all with me? I don't have God figured out. No one's ever going to have God figured out. Don't don't really want to because then I wouldn't listen to him. See, what people think they understand, they try to own. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move on. We've got to read this. It's taking entirely too long. Okay, so the one who's weak in the faith receive you, implying that he's talking to the strong, but not, right off the bat, not to what? Yeah. Doubtful disputation means having a whole bunch of disputes. Just getting a whole bunch of discussions and argument. You, you don't know that? You don't believe that? No, I ain't, ain't really got time for all that. You didn't, look, you didn't know it at one time either. Big, bad, strong you. <laughs> Someone received. I'm thankful for all the people who received me. People receive me, I wear them out. <laughs> all my mentors, why? Hold on a second. Run that. Can I, can I ask you a question? What? And it, that, you said that? Oh, what? Yeah. Thank you for receiving me. Praise the Lord. It goes on, it says, for one... One what? One that's in? One, one that's in the group? One, one that's in the family? Not not one. Not not one, but one. Okay. For one believes faith that he may eat all things. Another who is weak, but I, bam. Did y'all catch that? I'm going to talk about it. I got to move on. But see, okay. So you're strong when you're convinced with God. I can receive anything by giving thanks and eat it. All right. mm -hmm. So God establishes very clearly as we go through this, who's weak and who's strong. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. I don't want to be in a strong group. Why? You got to receive the weak then. You cannot be arguing with them doing all kind of weird stuff with them, shaming or whatever, running them all. Uh, you you got to receive them. Receive them like, like what I just said, I thank God for the people who receive me. Because what? I wore them out. Y'all act like you paying, you say you paying attention. Because I go, what? Ask them, ask them, ask them. That's what you got to do. If you're so big and strong, and you, so you better, out of all people, know why you believe what you believe. Not with an opinion or a whim, but with God's word. So if you're receiving, so maybe you don't want to be in a strong group real quick, because if you're receiving, it means you got to answer that question. Again, from the word. Amen. Okay. So it says, one believes that he may eat all things, another believes who, who is weak eats herbs. Vegetarian. Let not him the one who what? Eats, despise the one. Oh, look, look at that. They're eating, they're eating another salad over there. Look at that. <laughs> you would just gently wipe your mouth and smack them across. Like, we don't. We, no, just, don't do that to them. Well, this has elements of your brother and sister's keeper. That's why we'll spend a lot of time in Romans 14. Just not. Not anymore today. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He says, let the one that eats dis uh, not despise him who eats not, and let not him who eats what? Not judge. Oh, there's then they come with a judge. Judge the one who eats. Why? Because God has received him. Him who? Both. <laughs> Who are you? Bo both. Who are you to judge? Another man's servant. Implying we live to God, I told you. To his own master. He stands or it's between the end. It's you individually with your God. According to his word. He stands or falls, right? 
Yes. Get this. He shall be held up, holding up. For God is able to make him stand. Who? Both. I told you, confidence has got to be in God alone, not what you know. What you know is not going to cause you to stand. What's going to cause you to stand? God. God is going to hold you up in what you're convinced of before him in his word. And if you're not getting about that, that means it's progressive. It, that changes over time. It grows over time. It doesn't zigzag over time. It expands <laughs> over time. All right? This is what I want to get to, but that's the context of it. Verse 5. One esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day. Right? What's today? See, everybody's saying something different, see? Because you're esteeming it different. Uh-oh! Someone said double cheeseburger? It is National Double Cheeseburger Day. Now I got to say it on, <laughs> on this day. Some people said one, day one. Right? Okay, that's good. Some, somebody said Wife's Appreciation Day. <laughs> That's esteeming a day. People come here and say, he's not talking about the Sabbath. Wrong. Of course he's talking about the Sabbath. It's probably the top of the list, but that's not all. That's not all. There are a lot of other days. He's covering them all including the Sabbath, Shabbat, as well as, like, your birthday. Uh-oh. We'll just cut right to it, get right to you. You esteem your birthday. Not like other days. Oh, tell me I'm wrong. There you, whoops. There you go again. Wedding anniversaries. Whoops. Are these things wrong? Not particularly. So, why are you stressing? Make sense? Do you, you have to celebrate Christmas? No. Ain't gonna get shot for that. You might want to stay home. <laughs> Let me put it like this. God ain't gonna get mad at you. Other folk will have problems. But, you know, it's between you and God. I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing my best to go slow. It's easy, like, oh, okay, see what, he, what is really being said here. He's not, no, he doesn't say Sabbath here. There's going to be other places he's going to say Shabbat straight up. But Shabbat's in there as well as, there are whole denominations. You ain't never going to celebrate your birthday. Or any, any holy day, holiday is holy day. Well, that's a problem, but God, God tells you. You better recognize this holy day. That's, that's where the word holiday comes from. He made these holy days. And he says, you better. So he's including those. Now, maybe not the Hallmark ones that are made in America. But they're taking his word. And a holy day was a holy day because he said, you esteem it. But there are people who don't know his holy days. In his family. Okay, a.k.a. born again. They're not esteeming it. Oh, no. <laughs> they'll be okay. They'll, they'll be okay. If you're strong, and you might put them on something instead of dogging them out, like it commands us to do here, right? Y'all with me? Yeah. Trying to go easy and slow. And so let's read that again. One esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day. Now, I, I, you know, it don't matter to me what day it is. I'm excited. I'm glad. And I tried that for a while after I got born again. And uh, I, w I was told I was wrong uh, by my family. So uh, I, had to, I had to start esteeming days again. 
Daddy, it's my birthday. It's another day. <laughs> Grow up. Be strong in the Lord. <laughs> Just trying to be practical with this. We ain't even got on the up. <laughs> yeah, but he's not, you know, he's not, he's, notice God's not judging on this. Y'all should be a little more excited. Okay, man, the pastor's making this free. He's making this clear. He's, okay. Let every person, here's the key, because one's doing it, one's not. Oh, my gosh, we got to kill each other. We got to break up. We got to split up. No. Because it says everyone. Let everyone be what? That's everyone. That's everybody, but it's on an individual basis. Let everyone be what? Well, not, part, not partly persuaded. Not grass is greener on the other side. Well, it looks like fun what they're doing. I should do it. That's not faith. Uh, that is not fully persuaded. Well, they're doing it, so it's okay. Uh, for them, if they're fully persuaded, but not you following after them because they're doing it, that is exhibit A. You are not fully persuaded, which means I'd be in big trouble. With who? God. Because I need to know and be confident in him. And I don't know about you, I was born again as a babe in Christ, and I, he's told me to grow on and grow on, and by his grace, he's continuing to raise me. All right. Y'all good? Yeah. Must be fully persuaded in his own mind. Not with your own opinion. Right. On the word of God. Yeah. Between God. Then verse 6 says, he or the one who regards they, why do they regard the day? They regard it to the Lord. This is the Passover. Who created that? The Lord. Okay. So the person's esteeming it to the Lord. Not to the congregation, not to everybody else. He who regards the day regards it to the Lord. And, same way, the one who regards not the day, why don't they regard the day? Because God freed me. I don't need it. I don't need it. I can choose to. But I don't have to. And we're both good. With God at least. Thank God. Are you all okay? Y'all looking like, oh man. This is more important than you may may realize. This, this is the key to being who God has called us collectively to be. This is good. Um, and then it finishes. <laughs> look at this, because well, I'm, I'm going to leave it there, because it gets into eating, and then because it, it, it covers everything or most everything. Whether you eat or not, you're doing it under God. You're giving God thanks. If the person's eating herbs over there and they're mad, that's their own stupid fault, because they ain't doing it to the Lord. So I'm going to end this for right here, for right now. My point being, you got to be fully persuaded before God yourself. There is no private interpretation of Scripture. I got to put that on there, too. You can check that out in 2 Peter 1.20. That means you, I can't have my own. I think the Bible says this. No, you got to go through the Scripture. The Scripture defines and magnifies the Scripture. And, and you might want to get some more seasoned saints ahead of you, their input, before you just start running off on stuff. Uh, also, this is why Timothy was commanded by Paul, the Holy Spirit, that you got to show yourself, be diligent, says study, but be diligent to show yourself approved unto God, not a committee. Hang a council. You got to be fully persuaded between you and God. That means you got to be diligent to show yourself approved to God. God, is this for me? Is this right? Is this, I see this in your word, but that you don't need to be ashamed, embarrassed, a worker rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> Y'all should see your faces today. I trust you all well.
That's 2 Timothy 2.15. All right. <coughs> and with the remaining minutes I have, we'll get into the outline. We left off <laughs> last week talking about how the Shabbat, the seventh day, God did something very specific to the children of Israel to make them unique. And we're going to go back and look at it. You can go to Exodus 19. Because, again, whenever I've, you know, whenever I have, and I do these things, I witness debates and things like that, and people talk about it, they're always talking about the law. You, you can only have an intelligent discussion when you define terms first. And when people throw things around like that, the law, I, I got to stop. I don't even know what you're talking about. Because there's people mean so many different things by the law. Some people mean the Ten Commandments. Some people include the ceremonial laws and the Ten Commandments. Some people include the 613 some odd commandments under the old covenant for law. I'm already confused. Thank God God isn't. And it's his word. And we should just listen and pay attention. Amen. So I showed you this because people go, most everybody, they, they, they focus, when it comes to this issue about the Sabbath, they focus on the Ten Commandments. If you want to call it the law, the law of Moses, or whatever, they, they focus on the Ten Commandments. Without exception. Except when you look at it in context, it makes it very clear. What God, what God was doing, it's very clear, because he said. Now, people make things complicated, but not God. So we didn't go to Exodus 20 where you're going to find all oh, the, the commandment. Because the, that's not the full, we weren't going to look at it, but that's not the full context. Now, I, I believe I made a misspeak last week. I told you, you know, you want to read Exodus 19, Exodus 20, and I think I said 20, chapter 21. You, you got to go all the way down to chapter 24, 19 through 24 get the full context. I'm going to give you the highlight. You can see by these highlight what the context is. But notice, I just showed you what's up my sleeve. Read, read it <laughs> for yourself. You don't have to be convinced by me. Okay. You need to know it from, from God. So Exodus 19. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're looking at me like you're looking at me because you're like, I don't care about no Sabbath. <laughs> Not a good answer, but I, uh, by the end, you will care. You'll be excited about you will You will care deeply. You will. Let me get that Sabbath thing. Where that Sabbath thing at? Let me get that Sabbath thing. But we got to go there. Because if you're making it a day, you're missing it. What are you going to miss? Now, what we're going to see right here, it's a day. It's a mandated, it's a day, it's a seventh day, and you better sit down and be quiet, says God. Yeah, I mean, but he was talking. He was doing something specifically, and he was talking to a specific group. And you and I aren't in that group. I don't, well, I don't think you are. Okay, so are, are, are you in Exodus 19? Yeah. Maybe it would help if I go over there. Okay, I'm, I don't know what's going on today. Let me, let me follow you. Uh, Exodus 19, God is dealing with Moses. He's just brought the people. They're about, he hasn't just brought them out of the, out of the land of Egypt. He's, a, he, he's brought them out. He just dealt with 40 years of people bucking God, denying God, refusing to go into the promised land. They're about to go into the promised land. And he's getting stuff in order. Then he makes a mistake. Then he doesn't get to go in. But he got them all ready. 
to go in, and Joshua got to come in. Okay, okay. So in Exodus 19, God's very specific about his intentions and what he's doing. For sake of time, let's just look at, start at verse 5. And I get I encourage you to start up above this and that. And God's talking to Moses, and he's giving him very specific instructions for the Israelites, the people he just delivered, or not just, but he brought out of bondage from Egypt. In order, they took the 40-year break, not God, in order to take them in to what God promised them. But they, 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 weren't, they weren't going for that. So now an, an, a generation has died and so Moses is dealing with the up-and-comers. Okay. See, the generation died. He talked to them already, but now he's got to do it again because you got a new group. Right. Ooh, I, I could, I could, I could. See, when Moses let them out, the old head said, we don't want to go in. There's giants. We can't. They're going to squash us. Da, da, da. Caleb and Joshua went to streaking, taking their clothes off. Let's do it right now. What y'all talking about? But the group, and so God couldn't bring them in. He didn't kill them. He blessed them. They never got sick. Read it. They, they, they never <laughs> went without. It said their, their shoes never wore out. Now, I don't, I don't understand it. 40 years. You ain't got no 40-year pair of shoes. He's supernatural, doing everything he can in their rebellion. But they're dead. Now what? They're younger, their generation came up. Now who's talking to them? Moses. Young folk don't need no young leader. Y'all missed that. <laughs> Your peers can't lead you. They can go with you. But they're about as smart as you. Right. Right. They know what you know. Right. They don't know something you don't know. That's why God created parents. All right. Okay, I'm going to move on. And so he's reestablishing it with the young bucks. Because, like, here we go. You're not going to be stupid. Because they're the ones going in. Like the whole message in there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Young folk need a seasoned, advanced leader to show them how to use their creativity and what they want to do without spinning off, without crashing, without burning. There's a, there's a big message there. I, 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 just gotta, I just gotta move along. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, it's very prevalent for this time. Very apropos for this time. All right. The enemy's driven a wedge between old folk and young folk. Not me. I don't get it. That's stupid. I don't, I don't know where I'd be without quote unquote old folk. Amen. It just means they were older than me. <laughs> I got a whole lot of experience. Swag, information, game that no knucklehead peer of mine ever had. They knew what I knew. Then they started following me because I got put on game by somebody ahead of me. It's God's way. Old message, you know, just, just, I mean, that's really a theme throughout Scripture. Praise the Lord. I'll move along. So here, that's what Jesus, that's what God's doing right here. He's getting his younger crew ready to go in. So he's retelling stuff he said to the old heads. All right, here we go. So, yeah. So this is like Israel 2.0. Okay, I, I'm moving. Maybe 3.0. I don't know, but it's not. You can't make all Israel be all the same thing. All right, it says, now therefore, verse 5, if you're there, say, I got it. Yeah. Now therefore, if you will hear and obey my voice indeed and keep my law. Mm 
Let me try to read that again. Are you aware? I, I try, okay. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my law. Hello. This word right here, which isn't a law. You, it's a relationship. It's a blood covenant relationship. This ain't personal, baby. This is business. Religion isn't a relationship. God's establishing a very specific, unique relationship with a certain group of people. It has nothing to do with a law. It has nothing to do with a religion. This has nothing to do with faith. He's making a nation. He's making a nation under God. He's making a nation unto God to himself. That's what he's doing. This has, listen, this has nothing to do with religion. He's not. God, God hates religion. He's never established a religion. And he made it very clear what he's doing. I'm talking to you about a blood covenant relationship that I'm establishing with you. Not a contract, not an agreement, not a compact, a blood covenant where two become one forevermore. Now, if God gets with some people, they're going to be different than everybody else. Amen. Now, the thing about under the old sea, they really couldn't get with them because he's holy and they're not. <laughs> That's why you don't fully appreciate the miracle God's done with you. He made you. When you put your faith in Jesus, he made, it's a miracle, truly, supernatural. He made you a new creation after himself. You are literally his child. You are a descendant off of him, not Mo. You are literally carrying God's spiritual DNA. They weren't. They're Adam's descendant. You're Jesus' descendant. It's a different. So this blood covenant, God's trying to have, like, the, it's not even the same covenant that we have with God, but he's prepping them for this one. This is the foundation for this one. They're not at odds. This is not a war. They're not against each other. What God's doing right here is a foundational thing for something greater. You take this out, you ain't got nothing in the new. Why don't we just keep this one? Because if you keep this one, it's incomplete. You don't have the new. They rely and need each other. It's like two-sided currency. If you only got one side, you're going to prison. Got it? No, you're going to get locked up. That's a felony. That's a bad forger. If you only understand one side of God's covenant, it's devastating. That's what religion is. That's what's going on by large. People can't rightly divide where they are. They haven't been taught. They haven't been exposed. They haven't been shown. I can just read Exodus and take out of Exodus what I want. No, Exodus ain't got nothing to do with you. Not that, not like for today. Or David or da none of those. Okay, praise the Lord. Y'all with me? Watch this. He says, now therefore I will, if you will, obey my voice. Because he's talking to him. He's giving all this instruction. If you will obey my voice and keep my what? Covenant, bereaf. That is not a compact contract. Law, religion, it's a blood covenant relationship that they all understand. You're going to see it in a minute. Then you shall be a peculiar. Peculiar doesn't mean you're weirdos. Peculiar means you have a higher value. You're, a better word might be prized. You're a prized or a peculiar what? Treasure. You're a prized treasure to me. Who's me? That's God. Above who? I'm separating y'all out. Above all the rest of the people. I made them all, but I'm going to separate you all out. For all the earth is 
he's got to save the earth. So he's got to start somewhere. And he says, and you shall be unto me. See, this is, now he's telling you what, what this covenant's going to do. You shall be to me. Be to who? God. To God, to me. What, what's, what are they going to be if they, if they come into this? A kingdom. That's a nation. That's a country. It's, not a, it's certainly not a religion. In no way, shape, or form, that's a religion. You shall be what? A kingdom of priests. Kings and priests. See, that's been fulfilled in the new. And a holy nation. See, the new talks the same way, but to a whole different level. So what's he trying to make here? A kingdom. A, na a holy nation. He's trying to make a people group set apart and distinct from what? All other people groups. He's not making a law. He's not making a religion. He's making a relationship he's making a covenant how else could everybody do the same god made all people how could they be a how could they be separate unique he got to enter into them <laughs> he's the difference maker because what he made all people adam right and eve and they all got cut off they rebelled so everyone God made is now <laughs> in rebellion. So he's starting with people in rebellion called Israelites. He said, I'm going to inject. We're become one. I'm going to inject myself into you. You're going to become part of me to make y'all set apart. Because I told you from the beginning in Genesis 3, the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the seed of the serpent. It'll bruise his heel, but he's going to crush his head. That's where it started. Where's this seed? You got to start looking for the seed. This is him preparing to bring out his seed. Mm. That's why, you know, you should be taking notes and make sure you mark these and you go back over it. Y'all good? Yeah. You'll get it. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And so he says, and so shall you be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation to him. These are the words which you shall speak to the who? Children of Israel. We're going we're to use this group. These are the descendants of Abraham, right? Now, for sake of time. Now, but it goes on. If you read and Moses called the elders and the, he's just obeying with Jesus. It's a lot of step and repeat. God tells him what to do and he goes and does the, does the thing. So if you go to chapter 8, excuse me, chapter 8. <laughs> Chapter 20, the following chapter. Mm -hmm. um, we'll stop at verse 1 real quick. It says, and God spoke all these words, saying, he continues to pick back up speaking to Moses. Because God said one thing in 19, and he, you just saw it, and he went and told the people. Now, he's back in 20, talking to Moses, and he's going to go tell the people. Okay, so God spoke all these words, saying, now this is where you're going to find the quote-unquote Ten Commandments. Well, you'll see why I say that in a minute. But we're going to look at verse 8 because there it is. If you got it, say I'm there. Yeah. He says, remember the Shabbat, the Sabbath day, the seventh day. To what? Keep it holy. Six days shall you, <laughs> shall you, you who? You, my covenant people, not my religious people, my nation, my kingdom, not my religious ones. But you shall do what? No labor? Is that what I heard you all say? Uh, let me start back in verse 8. So you remember the Sabbath day to keep it. The six days you shall do. That's when you're going to work for six days. You got all those days and do all your work. But the, there it is. The Shabbat's the seventh day. Of the, uh, the, but the Shabbat is a, the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your main servants, your maid servants, nor your cattle, uh, nor your stranger within your gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth mm -hmm. and the sea and all that in them. And then he did something. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't say he 
reclined. It didn't say he vacated. It says he left off. He, he ceased. That's an action. And that's where the, he's saying right here again, that rest, that right, right there, is where Shabbat came from. That Hebrew word. He rested the what? Shabbat, the seventh day. The Lord, that's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So there it is in the context of the Ten Commandments, but it's interesting. Uh, if, if you keep reading, and I suggest you do, uh, you're going to see God come down to the mountain, burn the mountain, Moses, and I was doing all this stuff, making an offering and doing all this stuff. But if you, uh, like even if we don't leave chapter 20, if you go down to chapter, verse 22, I just want to show you, now you can I read all of it <laughs> at home. It's, it's rather lengthy, but you're going to see what's going on. The Lord said to Moses, thus shall you say to the, God got a lot to say. He ain't done talking. He goes back and forth and back and forth. Because he's establishing a nation. This is how the nation is going to function. Because I'm making a covenant. These are my people. I'm their God. It's not a religion. Okay, let's put it like this. I'm their king. They're my people. Everybody else got kings. They didn't. So he's establishing, if you would, the rule of his kingdom. He's giving these laws. Do you have laws in this nation? Yes. To make a nation. Not a religion. I'm stressing this because people, I, I've never heard anybody talk about this. They just want to talk about religion, the law, the law, the Ten Commandments. And how can we keep nine and not ten? And, uh, you're missing the whole thing. This is for very specific people, a specific time. That doesn't mean it's over. And that's not the end of the story. It's just part of the story. Oh, I pray you stay with this. See, again, people, religion, complicated, extremes. Well, that's it. That's it. No, 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 no. This is just, this is just, we're still covering just one part. We ain't covered this thing hardly at all. Just one part. Look, I'm not even finished with this outline. Bear with me. I'm going to try to do one. I'm going to try to do one. I'm going to try to finish one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to finish one because I can't leave you hanging here. You're like, oh, if you can get opinions. I just want to see you're going to, if you just keep reading, you're going to pick up. You're going to see it's a back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to see. You, watch what you're going to read. Ain't no Ten Commandments. Don't lay with no animals. You're going to see that in there. Like, because you have got to, there's some freaks on earth. When you get in rebellion from God, freaky stuff happens. And God's saying, no, I'm starting, I'm, st I'm starting, a, this, is a diff this is a different nation. Yeah, I'll pick the highlight, but just to get your interest. So you go back and read, you're going to read, you're going to read, oh, how many, oh my God, you don't keep none of them. Because it goes chapter 21. I, miss, I believe I misspoke last week. I guess I did the Reader's Digest. But no, 21, God's still talking. Moses got to go tell the people, 22, God's still talking. More, more, more. Watch how you eat this. The 10 are just cute, I guess, and are easy to carry. That's why people drag them on, because he's talking about this covenant for his country, his nation. And so we get through 22. Then 20. 23, God's still going. Still going. About his nation, how his nation works. Oh, we get to chapter 24. And he said to Moses, oh no, he's still talking. You're just going to see this yo-yo, just bang, 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 bang. Y'all there? Yes. And he said to Moses, come up unto the Lord, you, 
Aran, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of who? Israel. And worship you afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord. They had a whole thing about that. We ain't going there, Moses. You talk to God. We'll listen to you. Liars, liars, pants on fire. Liars, liars, liars. So this, this is where this is. Not, God's not telling them to let them stay over there. God said, bring them up here. They said, no. They went and they said, no, we're good. Moses, you go up there. You come back and tell us what he said. Chicken. God, see, God invited. You're going to read it. If you gave me time, I'd love just to go, let's just read. You'd be so clear. But you can do it. You can do it. You got the Holy Spirit. You, got, you can do it at home. Amen. Amen. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. See, if you just dropped in there, you think, well, God's mean. No, they, they asked for this. And Moses came and told the people. So you gotta, you, if you speak for God, you got to tell them everything. <laughs> God talked to me. <laughs> Here's what he said. You better not forget nothing. <laughs> Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. Get this. Now pay attention. Get this. And all the judgments. That, that, that's the laws that govern how, how things run. And all the people answered with one voice, oh, Lord, here it goes, and said. So he read everything, all those chapters I just gave you. From 19 to 24, he's reading all that again to them. And the people said with one, one voice, they did not have to. I would have been throwing Chuck and Rocks at every person I could hit. Boy, I'd be like, shut up. What's wrong with you? Because this is a covenant. And if you don't do what you say, you're dead. You're saying that as you enter into the covenant, you're going to see it. I mean, it, you, you all know about blood covenant enough by now. It's not like you get in there and you don't do it. You're like, what? Why are you mad with me? No, you, we had lengthy discussions. As you see, all these chapters. And the people said with one voice, what did they say? All the words which the Lord has said. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> now I'm being facetious, but like, I would have exited the camp at that point. I said, I'll wait for salvation down the line. Off of, so you all work this all out? You ain't going to do that. <laughs> okay. What did they say? We will do. And Moses, pay attention, wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar. You should already, covenant folks are already, uh-oh, uh-oh. This ain't worship. This is cutting a covenant that he built an altar under the hill with 12 pillars according representing each of the 12 tribes of Israel because he's making a new nation and he sent young men with the children of Israel which that, those 70 folk which what offered burnt offerings and sacrificed what peace offerings of oxen to the Lord and Moses took half of the here we go this ain't no priest coming out there. This is what the Lord said. And going back inside, this is cutting covenant now. Took half that, and you know, it's a lot of folk. That's a lot of blood. That's right. You know, half the blood. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we go. Y'all, y'all with me? And Moses took half the blood and put it in basins. That's a lot. And half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. That's for God. And he took the book of the covenant. The book of the what? Covenant. Not a law. Not a law. Like people, a way of having a relationship with somebody. The book of the covenant, that's what it is. It's called, y'all, it's called what? Terms, blessings, and cursing. That come out of lengthy discussion. That framed the what? Relationship. Are you with me? So he took the book of the what? Covenant. Mm. And he, he's, he's reading it again. 
Maybe I should sit here and read it. He's, he's read it a couple, few times already. And he read it in the audience of who? The people. The people. And they said, like, like they were, was someone leading the cheer or something? What? All. How, some of. Some of what the Lord said. You're basing your life willingly on this. They know what a blood covenant is. Oh. And they said what? All that the Lord has said, we will do. And all oh, be quiet, be quiet, please, and be obedient. They sealed it with their words, so Moses is going to seal it with the, blo with the blood. So the blood of the f life of the flesh is in the life of life. And so Moses took the blood. The other part, I went to God. He said, people don't talk about it. And he sprinkled it on the, oh, you're sealed now. It's over, blood covenant. And he sprinkled on the people, and behold, the, he said it. He said it, the blood of the law. The blood of the Ten Commandments, the blood of this relationship, the blood of the covenant whereby we are now made one. Woo! Now you see why Israel get in trouble. With their mouth. Saying they're going to do something they should have known they couldn't do. But they always talk the big game. God knows he's going to save them, but he's going to teach them. You, 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 you talk too big. You, you, you talk about things you don't know about. Mm -hmm. They could have just let them be their God, be quiet. Let's, do, let's just do what he says. You don't need to shed blood over it. You could have just. <laughs> but now their life is on it. This, behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all the words. Whew. It's done. And, and I'll give you a hint. Let's say in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam and Eve his word. Right? Don't eat the fruit of that one tree. You can eat everything else in it. You got to touch all the trees, but don't eat the fruit of that one tree. God gave Adam and Eve his what? Word. What happened? Immediately disobeyed. At least they weren't in a covenant. They're about to step and repeat. As soon as they said we're going to do it and obey, guess what happened? You read it. They break it. They rebel. It's rebellion, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a mistake. It's not like, oops. This was a public ceremony where we came into relationship like a wedding. <laughs> this is where weddings come from. Well, we are now unified. We're made one. And I've agreed to forsake all others. That type. And I'm putting my life on it, and they break it. So we're going to end with one, but I'm going to give you this because it's very, very, very key. How many think Israel kept the covenant? <laughs> okay. How many think you'd keep the covenant? You better keep them hands down. <laughs> it's impossible. God knew it was impossible. God didn't give them this to be right. God didn't give them. This is a covenant to get right. The new covenant makes it very clear. He gave this to them to convince them. Y'all are wrong. You can't do any, hardly anything you think and say you can't do. You need me. You need true obedience. Not mandated obedience. Okay. So that's the story. We see Israel. They, they have this yo-yo, just, just, just like God going back and forth with Moses. Yo-yo, maybe planted them seeds. They disobey. Boom. They obey. Come back. Oh, they disobey. And it's just on and on and on. So go to Jeremiah 31. Just so you have the words, you can see it, and people's opinions won't sway you and talk you out of it. Y'all get anything? Come on, we're almost done. 
Jeremiah 31, you should know what's there. Y'all should know what's there. Blood covenant folk. New covenant blood folk. Here's God. He's always talked about the new covenant, but here he's giving further. Genesis 3.15 was the new covenant, but here he's giving further to the people who got their own covenant. This isn't the covenant God wanted. Information about the covenant he does want. You understand what I'm saying? So he's, he, they're, they're still under this. They're in this. It's not going well <laughs> on their part, right? God's blessing them all he can. But so he makes this very clear to them. Verse 31. Behold, the days come, it's here, says the Lord, that I will make a not new law, not new commandment, not, not, not new Ten Commandments. I'm going to make a new relationship. I'm going to make a new blood covenant. Bereath, bereath. I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He says that because they all messed up. And they split because of their rebellion. They were divided. He said, oh, I'm going to get, you know. They, met, they all messed up. It wasn't some messed up. They all messed it up. And then he says in verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Now, you just read right by that. So whatever's going on in the old covenant does not pertain to us, to this new one. Who's saying this? God. You can't live in a new relationship with old ways. Try that at home. Went right over your head. That's why you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. He says, now this new covenant will make, it will not be according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that, I, just be specific, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. So we were just reading. So we were just reading. Not that covenant. Did you see the book of the covenant back there? Did you see the blood of the covenant back there? He says, not that. Seems pretty clear to me. That's why people are trying to keep the Ten Commandments today. See how, see how quiet it gets? That's what I'm, this is so... Uh, Basic. This is so relevant to everything you do today. You are not under a law. You are not under commandment. You're not under that old. This covenant is not, not doesn't go like that one. <clears throat> and today I brought them out of Egypt, brought them out by the hand of the land of Egypt. Which, look at look at this. Which covenant they break? He didn't say broke. They break it all. They, they, they broke it when I got up this morning. Why God? They break it. They just rip up my. They just tear it up. They, they break it. Y'all see that? Although I was a husband to the. See there. See I'm telling blood covenant man. In other words, I'm a faithful, dutiful husband to them. And they, they treat me like a dog. They break my covenant. Even though I'm faithful, to, I, I bless them, I heal them, I lead them. I... Y'all see that? Says who? The Lord. But, here we go. This shall be the blood covenant, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now, see, that's talking about Jesus. He's out the house of Israel. And that's what the old covenant prophesies. This won't just be the Jews. This will be to all people, like he said back in Genesis, when he started with Abraham or Abram. Through you shall all families of the earth 
be blessed. Not Jews. But salvation comes out of Israel to the whole world. Why? Because you got to be able to check this guy's lineage. You got to be able to track, is he fulfilling, is he, is he the one? Because we're told about this one, and this one's got to, got, to, got to line up, got to match up. That's why God's back there in what we just read. I got to start with the people at it. I got to, you know, we got a lump of clay. It's all the same. How are people going to know what to look for? I'm, I'm going to take out of that and set apart. Now watch this one. Yeah, they just like y'all. Stiff neck, don't do nothing right. But watch what I'm doing with them. <laughs> all y'all, all the world. Y'all unfaithful to me. That's how God sees you. But watch what I do. Out of the seed of Israel, out of the seed of Abraham, out of that is coming the salvation to the world. Not a denomination. You have a denomination so you can see it coming. You can track if it's so. It's the only purpose. Oh, boy. Amen. Your gears must be spinning because you would be shouting on. on. Mm. He says, but. The covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my, now he brings up law. Now he brings up law and people stop talking about law. <laughs> Typical religious people. In God, he's a trickster. He's, he's punning them. He's like, yeah, all that stuff, you made a lot, all that stuff, forget it, that you write down and you hold, you judge people by, I'm putting, I'm sticking it in your chest. I'm going to open your chest up and write that thing. I don't know rock. I'm going to put it in there. You're going to be born again. I'm going to make, I got to make you new. <laughs> I, I, I can't, no, no, no one can do anything with you. <laughs> we got to save you. I'm going to make you new. He said, I'm going to write my law in the inward parts, and I'm going to write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be mine. Oh, my goodness. Don't have to teach anybody anymore. Oh, I don't have time, but you, you should remember Ezekiel. He said, I'm going to take that old heart, a stone, I'm going to rip it out their chest, and I'm going to put a heart of flesh in there. That's what he's writing in. I'm going to give him... He said, I'm going to take their spirit out, and I'm going to put a new spirit in. He didn't say his spirit. He said, I'm going to put a new spirit in. That's the point of the new covenant. Y'all broke this relationship, and you can't fix it, says the Lord. I got to make a new one. And I got to make this dramatic. I got, you got you to have all the evidence, all the fruit that you need so you never go back. And you'll, you'll value this relationship that I am initiating, that I am, says the Lord, establishing with you. And it's not with you. God ain't sprinkled you with no blood. The new covenant is between God and himself. This covenant, that was the problem with it, it was between God and people. Doesn't matter what people. You can pick any of them. People are people. Y'all get anything? He says, I'll put a new heart, a heart of flesh. I'll put a new spirit within him. He does promise also later to put his spirit in that new spirit. But they're not the same thing. First, you're born again, and then he's able to put his spirit in there. We'll stop here for today, but that oh, it's a good place to start. Think about this. How can a holy God come and live inside a wretched person? He can't. It, I'm giving you proof and evidence of the miracle he did called you. You are not who you were.
stop thinking you are who you used to be. Stop thinking that God slapped some paint on you and made you know you are a miracle. He made you. He ripped your heart out. He took that old spirit. I don't know what he did with it, but he put a new spirit in you. Amen. Everyone who's in Christ Jesus. Complete miracle. That's why he says you've got to present your body. He ain't doing nothing for your body. Too bad. Present your body a living sacrifice. You kill sacrifices. How can it be living? It's alive to God. It's dead to you. You don't get to play with it. It's God. He's going to dwell in it. By what? The renewing of your mind. You're to be transformed. That's what I'm talking to you about right now. You've got to stop thinking, I said a little prayer and I got saved. That ain't what happened, baby. All right. That is not what happened. You, you disappeared. It wasn't even an overhaul. Good thing like this ain't this ain't classic cars. You can get overhauled. You're gone. And now he made you new. He didn't make a new you. He made you new. That anybody can make a new you. The miracle is he made you. Oh. He is going to make all things new. Thank God he's not making all new things because we'd be out. So if you're going to be in close blood covenant relationship with God, you cannot think you're who you were. You cannot think. He slapped some pain on you. You can't think this is religious. You can't think outside of his word. You got to renew your mind to that. You have been made a new creation. And when you present your body a living sacrifice, you'll be you'll, the fruit. Will, you'll be transformed. You know what transform means? That means caterpillar to a butterfly. Y'all got the Pixar Disney movies and all that, and, and, and hopefully you had a good teacher in kindergarten. That, it, it's amazing. There's nothing left of that caterpillar. No butterfly looks has any resemblance. Except that one movie, it was bad. Don't they? You can't slap some wings on some caterpillar. It sure ain't gonna fly. It complete. It goes into secret and comes out something completely different. You will, too, when you stop being religious. You will, too, when you get behind closed doors with your God. Help me, Lord. Present my body dead to me. I'm yours to command. He'll start fully persuading you about the truth, his truth, his, his truth is the only one that matters, about you. He'll start being what? Fully persuaded about the truth, God's truth about you, and you'll be transformed. No trying. See, trying is religious. I'm going to do better. No, you ain't. Quit lying to yourself. God didn't ask you to try to do better. God commands you, trust him never trust you depend on me says the lord not yourself see religion here's all this uh, you know this is hard yeah because you can't do it you, you didn't learn the old covenant that they break all the time this is new god said i'm coming within you i'm gonna cause you we didn't get to go to Ezekiel. You can look at Ezekiel 36, 33, and it tells you. I'm going to cause you to keep all that that was written back there. I'm going to write it in your heart. I'm going to cause you. Now, it doesn't mean he's actually going to make, you know, you're a robot. No. But if you allow him, if you lose your old thinking and believe who you are now that you're a new creation and say, well, maybe I, he is the head, so he got to choose, he got to lead, that he's going to cause you to please him. And when a person's ways please the Lord, he keeps them in perfect peace. He even makes their enemies to be as good as a friend, at peace with them. You're going to be transformed. But you got to learn to rest. Like God rested. Live it alone. You got to cease from your exertion. 
So even right now you're hearing, yes, I'm, I'm going to do better. No, you're not. You have to cease from your own work like God did from his on the seventh day. He didn't take a seat. He didn't lay down. He didn't take a nap. On the Sabbath day, he looked around. He said, oh, it's all perfect. It's very good and blessed it. And he said, watch because I ain't going to do nothing else. He didn't go to sleep. He didn't eat a sandwich. He actively didn't touch because it's finished. It's done. This is good. This is, you can't improve on perfect. I'm trying to teach you something. What he's done with you is finished. It's done. It's perfect. And you work and messes it up. And you trying to add something to, like Abraham, all the other people under the old, mess it up. Just trust him. Be fully persuaded. Boy, y'all quiet. That's better than good. You can give God praise. That come on, that was <laughs> y'all something else. Yo. Y'all is something else. See, that's a little different than coming out here and telling, y'all new, y'all different. Ain't nothing behind that. You got to build in the worst. You got to do what people can't tell you. Ain't, you ain't no new. Well, well, thank you much for your opinion. I don't care anything about the word says. God's doing something new with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the thanks for loving us so much, giving it to us the true, your true riches, understanding into your wisdom. Thank you for planting the seed of your word in our hearts to produce a bountiful harvest, to produce all the fruit that you've commanded that seed to do so all those finished works can come out, can be manifest, can appear. That you finished before the world, the foundation of the world. I give you all thanks, praise, and glory for these your people. That you gave them ears to hear and eyes to see. That with all they're getting, they get understanding. And Father, I thank you. Help them from today on to go back over these scriptures and not rush and take it as a chore, but to observe and listen to you and watch you work and watch you show things to us how you worked in the past how you're going to do something different now so we know what to answer when you what's shabbat <laughs> what sabbath what it really means what you're really giving to us and father i pray that you impress upon them to hear the whole matter we're still very barely scratching the surface we're looking at just where it came from but thank you for taking us to where you caused it to grow, to go. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord, who did everything for us, and did everything perfectly for us. That's why your last words, Jesus, were, it is finished. And then you rose after that. It's in your name that we pray, fully confident and persuaded in our Heavenly Father. And everyone in agreement with this prayer, say, Amen.